Hello and welcome to The A-List. I'm Andrew Pulaski. Today we are joined by Ann Harris, local award-winning artist, and she's going to discuss how she got to her, um, where she is today and a little bit about her work. So, um, Mrs. Harris, how did you um, get interested in art in the first place? Well, I think I always liked it. Um, uh, I remember um, looking at uh, books on painting when I was a little kid. My yeah. parents had a big coffee table book on Rembrandt that I that I adored. Um, and then I always drew. Um, my parents took me to museums and the like. Um, so it was just an ongoing part of my life. And um, so you have those those early. So did that influence you in high school, into college? So how did did you stick with art through there? Well, I actually. Um, you know, I said I looked at Rembrandt when I was mm. a little bitty kid. Um, I knew what great work was. Okay. Um, uh, I knew it because I could feel it, and uh, and I I was always the kid who had the facility. I mean, you all you all must have that. You have yeah. somebody who can draw, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So I was that kid, but I also knew I wasn't making great work, and I didn't know that I could learn it. I mean, I took art in high school. I don't think what I had was what yeah. you all have today, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and so I basically did what I already knew how to do. Okay. And uh, and I thought that was that. So I, in high school, was actually interested in studying music. Okay. And changed my mind at the last minute, wound up going off to college, not knowing what I was going to study. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, I took a drawing class because I thought it would be an easy A. Yeah. And, um, and it was the hardest class <laughs> I was taking. And I got so excited, I wound up going into the art school from wow. there. Yeah, so that was at Wash U, correct? That's right. So what, what opportunities at Wash U did you have that you wouldn't have at other schools in the art department? Well, you know, I actually can't speak to what I would have gotten at other schools. Mm -hmm. I only know the one oh, I went yeah, to, right? Oh, yeah, that's right, because right? you, you were interested in going to music. Right, well, yeah, yeah I mean, basically, um, Wash U is a great liberal arts university. Yeah. And um, I was interested in a lot of things. I was one of those, you know, uber students, right? Mm -hmm. I, I was... I was Ms. Straight A. <laughs> so, yeah, so, yeah. So I was interested in lots of things. Um, okay. Uh, but the art school at Washu, I was just really lucky. I mean, I don't know mm -hmm. what I would be as now if they hadn't had a good art school. I might yeah. have wound up doing something else. I don't know, or maybe I was meant to do this and I would eventually okay. have come around to it. But, um, but what I got was a, a few truly great teachers both in the arts. Um, the woman who, who lured me in was named Amy Sudarsky. Okay. Uh, there was a guy named Barry Shockman, who was an extraordinary teacher. Uh, there was an artist named uh, Jim McGarrell, who taught me as a senior, who's a very well-known artist. Uh, but then there were other artists who taught in the liberal arts, uh, like uh, Gass, William okay. Gass, for instance, a great, gr a great writer yeah. um, and philosopher. And so it, it, um, it just was a really good school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You moved on to grad school at Yale. Um, what what did you do there? So did you fur you furthered your artistic vision there, or? Yeah, Yale Yale has a, a not an undergraduate program. Okay. Um, it has you know it offers uh, it too is a liberal arts university, but it doesn't have an art school on the undergraduate level. Mm -hmm. But what it has is a is a an out an incredible graduate school in art. That's yeah. just the Yale School of Art. Okay. Yeah. And so I went there, and in the they have a department called the painting department. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's what yeah. I was in, right. Okay, and um, in, at Yale, like, what, what, what type of work did you do, and is that similar to what you're doing now, or did you, is that like, kind of a lot different? Um, I, I heard a lecture once by an artist named John Walker, and he mm -hmm. said that all painters have, have one motif. Okay. I don't actually know that that's true. I don't yeah. even think that's true for him, but it is true mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Which maybe says yeah. that I don't, I don't have a, um, a great imagination. I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but I've been uh, very intensely interested in portraiture yeah. for a long time. And I um, have gotten involved in self-portraiture. Yeah. Uh, Similar to Rembrandt, correct? He was, he was big into self-portraiture yeah, exactly, as well. Exactly. Exactly. And... Um, and it's something that initially I just started doing because I didn't have a model, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, got uh, uh, more and more in obsessed with it, basically. Yeah. And um, uh, there are a lot of complicated reasons behind okay. it. But um, but I, when I got to graduate school, I was working doing kind of grand figurative paintings that were really complicated, and I was sort of used myself, but staged this whole scenario. Okay. Um, 
I wound up actually painting a lot of my classmates while I was there mm -hmm. and doing lots of little bitty quick paintings yeah. because I realized when I got there I actually didn't know how to paint. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Yale has a way of turning you on your head. Yeah. Um, but when I got out of school, I went back to self-portraiture, and I've sort of worked back and forth between self-portraiture and working with others, working with models okay. and people that I know over the course of the years. Yeah. Um, and it's been pretty consistent. Wow. Yeah. Um, and so you're you're big into self-portraiture, obviously influenced by Rembrandt. You sent in a couple a couple self-portraits to us. Um, we're, we'll be showing on the screen right now. Uh, what? Um, how, how did those, you know, what are, what are those points, at points in your career, like what, how does it, what do those mean to you? Well, um, uh, I sent in, uh, I believe the first one was Bridal Veil. Okay. Uh, it's called Self Portrait Bridal yeah. Veil. That was 1994. So that was in that very first, this very first show that, mm -hmm. um, that I had uh, in a gallery. Okay. It was when I turned pro. Yeah, say. yeah. Um, and so uh, uh, that, that was, that was an important painting mm -hmm. for me. Um, the the uh, other painting I showed was from 2001. It's called um, uh, Portrait Pearls, mm -hmm. and that was shown in in the first show I had in New York. Okay. Um, so the bridal veil was shown at a gallery called Nielsen Gallery in Boston. Yeah. And then um, Pearls was shown at DC Moore Gallery in New okay. York. And um, and then the last painting that I sent in is uh, from 2012. It's called um, Red Robe. And that painting actually just, uh, it returned a few months ago. It was showing in the Smithsonian at the, oh, Nas wow. at the National Portrait Gallery. That's incredible. And, um, and those three paintings were what I think of or what would be referred to as major pieces okay. in that they, they held a memorable spot in the show and, um, and mm -hmm. got a lot of play or attention yeah. when, when they were painted. And, um, but uh, the common thread, if if your viewers are looking at images mm -hmm. of those yeah. and then they're looking at me, is that they are, um, you could say they're self-portraits, but they'll probably notice they don't look like me. <laughs> or rather, they might notice that the one from 1994 looks more like me now, mm -hmm. and yet that was painted when I was very young. Yeah. And, um, and then the one from Pearls, okay. I look younger, <laughs> right? And okay. then the, um, the one from um, the Red Robe, uh, is a, a fra frazzled, frowsy, just mm -hmm. woke up, yeah. uh, a slightly insane painting. <laughs> but um, but what I guess if there's a uh, if there are running concerns, I'm interested in the kind of intensity and the kind of psychological okay. grip. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a kind of tractor beam relationship yeah. that can happen between a painting and the viewer, but. Uh, but I'm not so much interested in likeness. Okay. That is what we tend to think a portraiture yeah. is, which is a, a depiction of what someone looks like. To me, that the sense that somebody's an individual really yeah. matters, yeah. but the fact that it represents somebody at a specific moment in time, I don't care so much. Okay. When you think about the great portraits in history, you mentioned Rembrandt's mm -hmm, self-portraits. Yes. We don't actually know what he looks like. Yeah. Um, we'll never know whether the description of okay. him was accurate. Yeah. accurate. It doesn't well, matter. Accurate. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Yeah. What matters is the paintings, we believe them. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. So yeah. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in um, that sense uh, that what we're looking at has a kind of human presence mm -hmm. and a kind of psychological intensity. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks for being on the show so far. We'll be back after commercial break to discuss more of your current work and okay. some awards you've won. We'll be back with the A-List. Welcome back to The A-List. I'm Andrew Pilevsky here with Ann Harris, local artist, local award-winning artist, and um, we're here to talk a little bit about her, her art right now. So um, we have actually a piece right here. Um, what's the title of this piece again? It's called Max Newborn. Okay, and so what was the process going into a piece like this? Well, um, uh, surrounding it, uh, let's see, I was doing a, a group of paintings uh, that were, this was after he was born, but they were paintings that were of myself mm -hmm. pregnant with him. Yeah. And then I also did some paintings of him as a tiny baby. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, you want to know technically how this yeah. was painted? Yeah, so okay. what were the steps that went into okay. this Okay, well, um, in this case, uh, which isn't typical of me, but this is done mm -hmm. on a, a panel, um, okay. which is actually made of a compressed wood called yeah. masonite. Um, and uh, you put down a layer of something called gesso, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and you sand it, make it very smooth, yeah. and um, 
and then uh, and then I start working with very in this case very thin layers of mm -hmm. paint that are transparent, translucent. Yeah. They're called glazes. Okay, it's all yeah, done yeah, in glazes, sure. it, it's all done in oil paint. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this was a painting that was kind of a lucky painting. I, I didn't make a lot of changes. It just sort okay. of flowed. Yeah. Um, and um, but there's a the transparency in it. Um, the sense of transparent skin mm -hmm. and the like, it yeah. comes from a layering of paint. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's literally like skin. It's okay. translucent yeah. layers that reflect translucent layers. So is, of do you skin. often have materials uh, that you know, reflect what the actual subject, or is this just one of those um, things where you um, chose this, the uh, subject just to um, because you had those materials that were kind of translucent and you're like? Well, uh, yes. Okay. Um, Basically, uh, uh, when one paints from life or from, you know, representationally from the yeah. world, um, you're always in this um, back and forth conversation or uh, between uh, what it is that you're working from the subject, which is really a metaphor. It's not literally a baby, right? It's just paint on a surface, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we were so convinced that it's baby that we think baby. Yeah. That's a metaphor. It yeah. is a baby, but it's not really, right? Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so you have that metaphor, and mm -hmm. then you've got the physical fact of paint. Okay. Um, for me, I paint best when I think metaphorically while mm -hmm. I paint. So if when I'm painting, I tell myself this is skin. I paint better. Yeah. I'm more inventive. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Well, um, we're also going to talk a little bit about how um, the Riverside Arts Center, you are vice president of the Riverside Arts Center, you said. So what, what does that entail, and what does the Riverside Arts Center do in general? Okay. I'm vice president of the board, mm -hmm. which basically means I don't do much. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> like typical vice presidents. Yeah. Um, in that capacity, I, I show up and I back up our president, which is Kim Piotrowski, who's a wonderful painter. Mm -hmm. um, but my um, my larger role on the board and in the art center is I'm head of the exhibitions committee, mm -hmm. and that means I work with our gallery director Karen Azarnia, okay. who's another terrific artist. Yeah. She's a painter who has a show up right now at Terrain in Oak Park. Oh, okay. um, but uh, we uh, coordinate the exhibitions at the Riverside Art Center. The Riverside Art Center has two parts. It's got a school, yeah. and so it has a lot of uh, a lot of classes for adults and for kids. Mm -hmm. And then it also has a gallery, which um, has a series of um, exhibitions that range from the RB AP art students yeah. to um, uh, artists that are world class. So, for example, this past fall we had Sabina Ott, who actually runs ter Terrain, okay. and she folded into that. Uh, a group of artists so she had with her work she also had a group of artists who were extraordinary one of them was the artist Michelle Grabner who's the current curator of the Whitney Biennial wow. so we have uh, a, a program that ranges from local yeah to national that's, that's, that's interesting you have all that art right at the right right in town that's at the Riverside right. Arts Center that's right it's a little tiny mm -hmm. gem of a space yeah. and it's all done by sweat equity and the shows are beautiful uh -huh. yeah they, they sure are I've, I've seen a couple they're, they're great and um, that's that, that's going on all that's going year round unlike you know the Riverside Arts Weekend um, right. you're, you're here all year you have you have great art right um, right so Ross going on right now mm -hmm. um, and that's you know a, an art fair right but that's not the Riverside Art Center that's a different yeah. entity okay um, so, do you want to discuss your mind's eye project? It's a very, very interesting concept. Okay. Um, that's something that um, is different from uh, what I've been known for over the years, which is normally I'm in the studio all by myself yeah. looking in a mirror, which looks back at me, mm -hmm. and it's very, very private. Yeah. Um, but I've also, since I, since I moved to Chicago, um, uh, I came here with my husband who's teaching at Columbia College. He's a photographer, okay. which is why we came here. Mm -hmm. um, I started teaching at the School of the Art, Art Institute of Chicago. And yeah. um, one of the things that I saw that was going on uh, with a lot of my colleagues uh, was a kind of a uh, sort of ground up, grassroots um, art conversation. A, a lot of artists, young and not so young, okay. um, were um, were uh, uh, creating exhibition spaces and were also um, creating kind of collaborative projects. Mm -hmm. And um, what I also saw in Chicago though, unlike the East Coast, which is where I came from, was that there was a real emphasis on kind of conceptual abstraction. Okay. There's a sort of Chicago Imagist that, mm -hmm. that uh, sits earlier, but um, 
but there wasn't a lot of working from life, and it tended to, at SAIC, get relegated to yeah. beginning. It's the beginning. Okay. And I thought, well, no, actually, it's a very sophisticated thing. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm going to, I thought about doing a project, which I wound up doing at one of these okay. innovative alternative spaces yeah. called the Mind's Eye, uh, in which I asked artists of all kinds of stripes, yeah. um, uh, ranging from figurative to uh, to conceptual, conceptual yeah. meaning it's about ideas, mm -hmm. to abstract, to come and, um, and look in a mirror and draw with me. Oh. And I based it on a project that I'd done earlier, a drawing project called How to Draw Yourself Out of a Hole, okay. where I just did a whole series of yeah. drawings that were all about this big, just looking in a mirror. Mm -hmm. And, um, and uh, I wound up with these other artists, um, uh, we produced, over the course of three weeks, a total mm -hmm. of uh, 207 drawings. Um, and there's a really broad range. They basically were um, open to, I, I asked them to okay. interpret perception as they wished, interpret self-perception as they wished, interpret drawing as they wish, yeah. and let's see what we arrive at. Okay. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm hoping that down the road this will expand. I'd like to do it in other places. Uh -huh. I also want to do a, um, a teenage version. So oh, I'm actually, yeah. I'm actually going to go to Trinity okay. um, uh, at the end of this month, and mm -hmm. I'm going to draw with their girls in their oh, art school, cool. and uh, and we'll reenact the project there. Yeah. Um, so have you? I assume you've gotten incredible success with this project. Like you know, well, it's the, just, uh, the work this that's put out is just I bet it's pretty great. Well, this just started basically. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a it's it's good. I mean, mm -hmm. the work is wonderful. Yeah. Um, I have the very work. Very honest. Very honest work. I, I hope think. so. Yeah. 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 Um, so. Do you want to talk, brag a little bit about the awards, you, awards you've won over the past, you know, two years, past couple of years, um, the National Endowment for the Arts and the John Simon Guggenheim Memorial Foundation Fellowship. So, like, do you want to talk about yeah. the, oh, like, the applying process for both of those and maybe just really quickly here? Uh, artists um, are always applying for grants yeah. because, um, as most people know, um, mm -hmm. it's a precarious life, yeah. you know, <clears throat> and uh, you're looking for ways to keep doing it. Um, and uh, so you bait a lot of hooks. Yeah. And, um, and over time, if you apply for a lot, eventually some come through. Mm -hmm. um, the NEA I got uh, early on, um, they don't have individual artist grants yeah. from the National Endowment for the Arts. That's a whole political conversation okay. we could have, but those don't exist anymore. But that was wonderful. It, it gave me a year to paint very early, and it allowed me to prepare for that first gallery show that I had in 94. Okay. Um, the Guggenheim I got actually at a point when I decided to leave full-time teaching. Oh, okay. And I had a series of work, uh, including that little baby yeah. painting that we just talked about, but also these um, big pregnancy paintings that were called With Max, which were really seminal pieces. Yeah. Um, they were breakthrough pieces. And, um, and that's a wonderful grant to get. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fortunate that when I applied uh, at that moment, whoever was on the jury, yeah. and it's a mystery, you never know, yeah. uh, happened to be inclined to like mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Yeah. Because there are a lot of fantastic artists who apply for these grants okay. over and over who don't get them. I'm lucky I got it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the process is, you know, you send in images, you do writing, you know, they, they look at your uh, CV mm -hmm. or resume, and they decide whether you deserve it. Uh, we're about to, we're about to wrap it up here. But before we do, um, do you want to give advice for any future artists, artists looking to go into the field? Um, uh, you should work really hard. Yeah. Get your work out there. Mm -hmm. um, the key is make your work first. Um, there's always going to be a balance between the career and the work itself. But um, but uh, the work's got to be there. Yeah. Um, uh, be fearless. Be fearless. Um, and, uh, and understand that um, uh, it may not, be fearless and be all in. Okay. Um, irony is a, is a shtick today, um, but uh, it, it, it really matters okay. when you love what you're doing. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being here, Mrs. Harris, and we'll see you next time on The A-List. <laughs>